besides being considered two big shots in American comedy. Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence are two tycoons who have amassed a lot of money during their careers. But have you ever stopped to wonder about which one of them has the most luxurious life? In this video you will watch a close battle between Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. So then, let's get to the fight! Before we get started, I challenge you. You have to click on subscribe and activate notifications check the option all. But! You have to do that in less than 5 seconds, you got it? And if you can, write in the comments hashtag about subscribe. Alright, let's get started! Round 1 Most Expensive Mansion When it comes to choosing a good place to live, the two comedians don't like to skimp out, but who owns the most luxurious residence? As an example, Martin Lawrence has as one of his most iconic properties a 16,000-square-foot mansion located in the Beverly Park Luxury Condominium in Beverly Hills, California. Built in 1992, the house of neoclassical architecture has an imposing facade with marble finishings. The interior is even more striking because of its exquisite classical decoration and hand-picked furniture. In almost every room there are large windows that offer plenty of natural light and great integration with the outside area. The residence has seven extremely luxurious bedrooms and ten impressively designed bathrooms. The chef's kitchen, on the other hand, is spacious and in a very clean style, with a special mention to the black granite floor and countertops. There are more than two acres of land, full of lush gardens and lawns, with plenty of space for leisure. An example of this is the beautiful swimming pool surrounded by coconut trees and bushes. The basketball court is one of the actor's favorite places, seeing as he always produces content for the internet in this setting. All this justifies the price of the property, which is valued at $26,500,000. Eddie Murphy, for his part, is not far behind. Ever since 2001 he has lived in a beautiful estate situated on a nearly 3.7-acre plot in Beverly Hills. The mansion has a large and imposing facade, being completely surrounded by beautiful gardens. Going into its interior, we can see that the rooms are very large and spacious, and have a very sophisticated decoration. Many areas have a color palette consisting of shades of champagne. And a mansion as large and luxurious as this, could not fail to have rooms exclusive to homes of this size. There are for example, a bowling alley and even a theater room equipped with comfortable armchairs. In all, the comedian's gigantic estate has around 32,000 square feet of floor space, being divided into 11 bedrooms and 17 exquisite bathrooms. However, on the external area of the house there is a beautiful pool with a hot tub, in addition to having a lot of free space with some very green grass. And to get an idea of price, it is estimated that to build Eddie Murphy's mansion it was necessary to invest around $20 million, but that currently it is valued around $40 million. And since Murphy owns a more expensive mansion, he wins this round. One point for him. Round 2 Cars Both actors seem to love riding around in luxurious vehicles, but which one of the two has the most lavish collection? Martin Lawrence, for example, does not usually like to share a lot about his private life. However, some sources claim that he has had cars, such as a $70,000 Porsche Boxster, a $85,000 Plymouth Barracuda, a $95,000 Porsche Panamera, a $240,000 Aston Martin V12 Zagato, a $250,000 Ferrari 458 Italia. Martin Lawrence has, in addition to all this, shared his Rolls Royce on his Instagram. Although it is not known which model the one in the photo is, this exquisite and luxurious brand sells new cars costing the very least of $350,000. Eddie Murphy, on the other hand, also has some good vehicles. He has been seen, for example, in a Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, a car well known for the way it opens its doors. The vehicle is equipped with an excellent engine capable of accelerating from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.5 seconds, and it's no wonder that depending on the year and model, its price can exceed $220,000. Murphy has also been spotted in an Aston Martin DB9, an even more expensive sports car whose latest models can top $250,000. Upping the ante, 
He has also been seen with a Ferrari 599 GTB Fiorano, a beautiful vehicle from the famous Italian luxury sports car manufacturer. This Ferrari model is equipped with a powerful V12 engine, which makes it one of the fastest cars of the brand. And it's no wonder that its price is estimated at over $300,000. The comedian also owns a Rolls-Royce Wraith, a luxury car valued at around $350,000. The most expensive vehicle Eddie Murphy ever saw, on the other hand, was a Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead Coupe, a stunning convertible car made for true tycoons. The interior of the car has a super exquisite finish, which was to be expected when it comes to a car like this. And to enjoy all this luxury, depending on the year, it may be necessary to invest a small sum of $500,000. And for owning a more expensive and luxurious collection, Eddie Murphy wins this round. One point for him. Round 3. Overspending. Being two successful actors, it is no surprise that they spend money on some not-so-cheap things. But which one of them overspends the most? Martin Lawrence, for example, likes to dress well, having already been seen wearing clothes from famous brands. Examples being a black recyclable nylon jacket from Gucci with monogram printing and a hood for rainy days, which costs $1,750. A warm finny sweater with FF printing worth $2,590. The Jumbo GG Canvas Sweatshirt Jacket also by Gucci made of cotton with lambskin details that costs $2,600. But something that the artist makes a point of paying for is his daughter's education. His oldest daughter, Jasmine, for example, has graduated from Duke University in the state of North Carolina. It is not known for sure if the young woman got a scholarship, but if her father paid for her studies in full, he must have paid tuition fees of up to $80,000 not to mention the expenses for his two other daughters. The actor has also posed for pictures on his Instagram with a Robinson R44 Raven 2 model helicopter, an aircraft capable of covering up to 250 miles, being ideal for those who want quick transportation. It is not known if Martin Lawrence actually owns this helicopter, but if he really did buy it, the bare minimum price is $430,000. Eddie Murphy, for his part, also likes to dress well, and has been seen wearing beautiful watches, such as a $10,000 Cartier Santos Gold, a $15,000 Rolex Day Date 1803, a $20,000 Cartier Pasha, a $35,000 Cartier Tank Francaise Paved Diamonds, a $55,000 Rolex Day Date Yellow Gold, a $70,000 Ronde Cartier, a $90,000 Rolex Day Date White Gold Diamond, when it's time to relax, Eddie Murphy has already been spotted aboard large yachts. Something he must use often, as he owns a 15-plus acre island known as Rooster K, located near Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas. And according to some sources, the actor acquired the property in 2007 paying around $15 million. And since he spends lavishly the most, Eddie Murphy wins this round. He scores another point. Round 4 real estate portfolio. Both actors seem to be quite fond of investing in real estate, but which one of them has the largest real estate portfolio? To enjoy his days off, Martin Lawrence has a rural retreat of approximately 116 acres located in Purcellville in the state of Virginia. The property includes two lakes with docks, perfect for fishing and boating, and several pastures for raising animals and growing vegetables. Surrounded by long grassy pastures and many trees, the place offers plenty of privacy, peace, and tranquility for the actor to recover from his hectic daily life in the big cities. The 22,000-square-foot house was built in 1980, but underwent renovations in 2004 in order to provide more comfort and refinement for the owner. The large floor-to-ceiling windows provide great integration of the indoor and outdoor spaces and contribute to the landscaping of the house. Being composed of five bedrooms and ten bathrooms, it is possible to have a very nice life in this property. To give you an idea of how luxurious this residence is, one can enjoy leisurely moments in the indoor pool and hot tub, the double bowling alley, the cozy home theater, and the beautiful basketball court that Martin Lawrence loves to spend time on with his family. Besides, there is even a beautiful gym in the house, plus, large walk-in closets, an open-concept kitchen with wooden furniture and lots of natural lighting, and many cozy living rooms. 
The ranch certainly made for some good times in Martin Lawrence's life, but the actor wanted to get rid of this property, having put it up for sale for $8,500,000. But Martin Lawrence's real estate portfolio does not stop there. From the actor's posts and also from his daughter Jasmine Page on social networks, it is clear that he owns another mansion in Los Angeles. The residence has a spectacular, panoramic view of the city and includes a giant infinity pool, which serves as the backdrop for his daughter's photos. Located high in the hills in the Encino district, the house had already been put on the market in 2013 for $6,600,000. There is no other information on the internet about this property belonging to the artist, but from what little you can see, you can tell that it is a real luxury mansion. Eddie Murphy, in turn, also has a nice real estate portfolio. In the 1980s, Eddie Murphy had another residential complex in his extensive real estate portfolio. It was located in Beverly Hills, California. The property has undergone major structural renovations and gained additional neighboring land over time, forming an impressive 14-acre lot today. The property currently features a 20,000-square-foot main house with a facade decorated by a wall with a vertical garden, a 7,000-square-foot Moroccan-style guest house, an extremely exquisite and well-planned stable for five horses, including a rustic living area with brick walls, a beautiful riding arena, refreshed by a waterfall right next door all in addition to a great tennis court that even has an area to watch the games. This huge complex was once home to famous pop singer Cher from the mid-1970s until 1988, when it was sold for $5,900,000 to Eddie Murphy. He renovated the property and expanded the accommodations before selling seven years later for $4 million. Back when Eddie Murphy was married to model Nicole Mitchell, he used to live in a gigantic 2.5-acre estate in Granite Bay, California. A house so luxurious it looks more like a palace. By observing its facade alone, it is possible to imagine how exquisite its interior must be. Going through the main door we find the huge and exquisite living room, which has a double-height ceiling and floor-to-ceiling windows that offer a beautiful view and excellent natural lighting. Although the mansion was built in 1998, the property is in no way outdated, even boasting a super-luxurious decor that will probably never go out of style. In all, the interior of the property has about 12,600 square feet of built area, featuring seven bedrooms and 11 spacious bathrooms. The mansion also features several interesting rooms, such as a game room with several arcade machines, a fully equipped weight room and a cinema room with comfortable armchairs. The outdoor area is one of the places that stand out in this property because there is a lot of free space with a spectacular view of nature. There is, for example, a guest house to receive visitors, a sports court, a barbecue area and a stunning and huge infinity pool with a hot tub. And according to some sources, Eddie Murphy sold the property in 2007 for about $6,100,000, which is not a very high amount if you take into account all the luxury that this estate has to offer. Eddie Murphy also once owned a large mansion known as Bubble Hill, the same name as one of his songs. Located in the town of Englewood in New Jersey, this huge mansion sits on a nearly four-acre plot of land, a site completely surrounded by greenery. Right at the entrance of the property, there is a beautiful staircase, which gives access to its exquisite interior. The mansion is equipped with a variety of rooms capable of impressing anyone, such as a cinema, a piano room, a professional recording studio, a games room with a pool table, an indoor swimming pool with a hot tub, a gourmet kitchen with state-of-the-art appliances, a dining room with a table for 14 guests, a garage with a capacity for five cars, and even a fully automated bowling alley with two lanes. In all, the property has about 25,000 square feet of built area, divided into over 32 rooms, including six bedrooms and over 10 bathrooms. And according to what was reported in the media, Eddie Murphy sold this property in 2012 to singer Alicia Keys. It is speculated that the value of the transaction was around the $12 million mark. And because Murphy has some more valuable real estate in his portfolio, he wins this round. He gets a point. Round 5. Net worth. Both comedians have made a lot of money during their careers, but which one of them has managed to amass the biggest net worth? Martin Lawrence, for example, although he is currently a bit absent from the film industry, his former works have earned him big fees and helped him to amass a lot of wealth. 
Some sources claim that the actor had huge successes with the following. Six million dollars with nothing to lose, in 1997. Eight million five hundred thousand dollars, with life, in 1999. Twenty million dollars with Blue Streak in 1999. Thirteen million dollars with What's the Worst That Could Happen, in 2001. Sixteen million five hundred thousand dollars with Black Knight in 2001. Twenty million dollars with National Security in 2003. However, with his own production company Rumble That Entertainment responsible for the Big Mama's franchise, Martin has achieved greater numbers. But it is probable that Martin Lawrence's most successful film works in terms of popularity is the Bad Boys franchise, in which he acts alongside Will Smith. The 2003 release Bad Boys 2, for example, earned Lawrence a $20 million fee. However, the last of the franchise's films, Bad Boys for Life, having a budget of $90 million, brought in a grossing of $419 million at the worldwide box office, which means that the profit must have been really amazing. And, of course, Martin Lawrence's fee must have been huge, too. Taking into account his entire track record and his high fees, some sources estimate Lawrence's net worth to be in the ballpark of $110 million. Not bad, right? In the meantime, Eddie Murphy had his fee growing at the same rate as his name became more and more known in the media. On Saturday Night Live, for example, he started out getting paid just $4,500 per episode, a figure that increased to $30,000 the following year. From then on things started to get much better, and Murphy's salary increased exponentially. It is estimated that he received about $200,000 for 48 hours. $1 million for Best Defense $8 million for Coming to America $14 million for Beverly Hills Cop $16 million for The Nutty Professor $17,500,000 for Dr. Doolittle $20 million for Pluto Nash and up to $60 million for Nutty Professor 2. However, in order to dub the character Donkey in Shrek, it is estimated that he has earned adding up all the films from the franchise, almost $20 million. And the amounts he received don't stop there. In 2019, it came out in the press that Eddie Murphy was closing a contract with Netflix worth $70 million. And all this wealth received by the actor is the result of the gigantic financial returns that his films bring. To give you an idea, Murphy is considered one of the highest grossing actors in film history, having films that have together grossed over $7 billion worldwide. And while no one knows for sure what his net worth is, some sources estimate that currently, at the peak of his 61 years of age, Eddie Murphy has an estimated net worth of over $200 million. And by having a much larger net worth, Murphy wins this round. Point to him. At the end of this battle, we have zero points for Martin Lawrence against five points for Eddie Murphy, granting him an easy victory. But if you believe that there are still other arguments to defend either one of the two, make sure to write your best justification down below. Hey, you like the video? So don't forget about leave your like and comment, and tell some suggestions of another videos, and hopefully we gonna do it. All about channel, deals to satisfy your curiosity.